Morning. Welcome back. Giles and Camilla are here discussing more of today's uh, top stories. Uh, Giles up in Edinburgh. Camilla has nicely come into the studio, unlike Giles. He's well, just feathering his own you know, nest up there, He's a very, isn't he? very busy man. Oh, very busy. Lots no. on. Lots on his agenda. Filling out, filling out stadiums. <laughs> yeah. Indeed Stadium he is. gigs he is up there. Um, Camilla, I've got a story here that I would yes. love um, uh, your little view on. Yeah. Now, Harry and Meghan buy film rights to a romantic novel, and Harry and Meghan have reportedly bought the rights to the romance novel Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune for an estimated £3 million. Yes. Pounds. Are they going into the movie business? Well, I, I think they Spotify might be, deal Josie. didn't work out, didn't Well, it? this is the interesting thing. So they obviously signed these multi-million dollar deals with Spotify, Netflix and others. The arch, um, t arch t uh, archetypes, beg your pardon, podcast, which Megan did for Spotify, she did 12 episodes and then it kind of died a death. She also came up with this uh, docu-series around a girl called Pearl that didn't quite work out for Netflix. I think Harry and Meghan have done an Invictus documentary that has worked out for Netflix, but we did get this message a few months ago that they were moving away from doing a kind of tell-all autobiography-type stuff like they did with their very, very successful Netflix series and moving into rom-coms and drama. So this must be it. Now, this Meet Me at the Lake, I haven't read it myself, but maybe it's something I should take on my holly bobs, um, has done astonishingly well. She sold tens of thousands of copies, I think, in the first week that the book was out, and it's been a sensation. So it's reminding me a little bit of, like, that book Where the Crawdads Sing that Reese Witherspoon brought up. It is a thing that Harry and Meghan always wanted to do. They're trying to model themselves a bit on the Obamas, who have got a production company that makes, actually, award-winning documentaries, to kind of move things a little bit more away from them and into the sphere of entertainment and production. Are there similarities in this book to their lives at Well, all? interestingly, yes, because apparently the story is about um, lovers that meet in their 30s. One of them had lost their parent in a car crash in their early years and went on to struggle with alcohol and drugs use. So that's a parallel, isn't it, with what Harry revealed to us in his autobiography, Spare. It's a bit of a reinvention. I mean, we've been talking for some time about a kind of Harry and Meghan essence because they're having to regroup a bit since Spare. They were lampooned by South mm. Park. Their popularity has tanked in this country and in America. They haven't quite made their mark. So is it now going to be a bit more of a behind-the-camera rather than in-front-of approach? And it seems like it might be that you, way. You, know, you, you should do what you know when you're starting off. Yes. And if they find it a relatable story and something they can do something with, fair play to them. Yeah, fair play to I, them. I hope it works yeah. out. I really do. They've had a pretty they, hard time. They do know what they know about this because Meghan has been in the movie and television industry all her working life. So here is a story actually set in Toronto, which is where she was making her television series Suits. And this gives them a long-term future because they can't go on stirring around their own past lives. And this actually, if they make a successful TV series for Netflix, well done them. Yeah, yeah, fair play. Good on them. Um, a hugely important matter now, Josie. It's, it's very, very important. <laughs> and it's going to have the nation chattering. Um, I want to talk about boiled eggs. If you don't mind. Oh, Why yeah. not? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's but, all white with me. It's... Oh, oh no. there you, go. you must be yoking. <laughs> oh, you are correct. Sorry, it's terrible. See what it? I did then? It's I really awful. Well, that is really yeah, good. Yeah, thanks for... Very good. Um, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a nervy time, isn't it, boiling an egg in the morning is for a lot then? of people? I yeah, feel get that, that right. I, can I just say that I am a self-confessed egg obsessive. I love an egg. I think an egg is the most versatile food stuff known to man. To get from a meringue to a fried egg... Magic. You can't name any other food that can make that transformation. Magic. And I sometimes think people overcomplicate eggs. Oh, you need to do this with the water, you need to cool it down, then you need to boil it. Oh, if you're poaching eggs, get some vinegar, you know, a shake of a lamb's tail. It's, it's not rocket science, this, is it, well, I don't know. Well, I think who does know about eggs is our very, very own I Phil bet, Vickery. You know, I bet, I bet Giles, though, has a very, very elegant way of boiling an egg. I just have... I oh. do. Oh, oh, I do, I and I'm ready for this. Eggs have been part and parcel of my life for many, many years. Indeed, as I perhaps have told you before, that years ago when I was a young actor and played the part of Hamlet, I was so bad the audience actually threw eggs at me. And I like to say I went on as Hamlet, came off as omelette. But here <laughs> I am in Edinburgh and I'm living like a student in a little flat doing my show on the fringe and I have a boiled egg for breakfast, lunch and tea. And I boil it in my kettle. That's all I do. I have a kettle here and I boil it. I have my egg, OK? And I put my egg in my sock, OK? You oh. take the egg, you pop it into oh, your sock like this, 
And then you low you boil the water and you lower <laughs> the egg into it. You see, by lowering right, it in right. there, there you are. You see, that's how you cook it. And right, so you, right. you'll be able to retrieve the egg afterwards when you, you have boiled it. You're wrong, you one, it for You're wrong. Exactly one. for three minutes, which you time on your mobile phone. So that's how to boil a perfect egg. One kettle, one egg, one sock, and one timer. And do you know what's just... really bad? He does a poached egg in his undies. Oh. <laughs> Seen it. Alternatively, you could just boil an egg in a saucepan of hot water. Uh, are they clean socks? That's of course thought. they are. They are afterwards. I don't believe Giles. They're, they're not the same. He changes socks five Team times socks. a day, I understand. Uh, Giles? It adds, they don't have to be clean socks. What? They add a little richness, a little flavour <laughs> to the outside. Uh, uh, and, and also... They're still in the shell at this stage. I don't have... In my flat, there were no saucepans. All there oh. was was this kettle. Uh, this kettle, I brought my own socks and I brought the eggs down the road. And I have to tell you, it's really tasty. And you don't need more than three minutes. Mm. Fine. Uh, right. This is your territory, Phil. Right. Tell us. When you cook a boiled egg, it's very simple. It depends how far you are above sea level. A bit technical. So if you're on the river, Normally, three, four to four minutes, 15 seconds is around, uh, is around about right. But what you've got to remember is, when you cook that egg and take it out, it's going to carry on cooking. Yes. So if you're on Mount Everest and you're boiling an egg, yeah. OK, the, wa the water boils around about 60-odd degrees. So you'll never actually cook the egg fully because the molecules can't, molecules can't escape. A bit technical. But, generally speaking, what I do is I make a, a, a small uh, dent in the, the, the flat side of the egg, which is where the air sac is, that's normally where it expands and breaks. Simmering water, four minutes. Now, I then take it out and leave it. If you make your toast... Like a or... tiny little dent, like a little crack. A little crack. So here, I've got this little machine I'll come onto in a second. What you do, get the flat end, and this has got a little tiny... See that little My tiny? I used to have one of those. It... Like oh, it's an egg pricker, oh, effectively, it's Josie. It's a go. It's a go. Never now, in my life. <laughs> they're into simmering water for four minutes. Take okay, it out. Satisfying. Take it out and just let it set for a couple of seconds. Now, if you're going to make your toast afterwards, the egg will carry on cooking. So you need to make sure you just get it about right. Now, the best bit of cooking equipment I ever bought in my life is one of these. Ooh. This is an egg cooker. I got so one. You, they're brilliant, brilliant, aren't they just? Brilliant. So you make the hole in the egg, you put the eggs in here like this, like so. You then, it might as well little thingy, on there you'll just see it says soft boiled, hard boiled, whatever. Ooh. Put your water in there. OK, got that? Yeah. In that goes, lid on, and it turns itself off, bang on. Every no, time, it doesn't. they are absolutely perfect. Works. What now, sorcery is this, Phil? Well, it's called just <laughs> making it damn sight easier, but these are some four-minute eggs I cooked recently, well, recently, a couple of minutes ago. That one's easy up another. How long, Alice, is that one? 20 seconds. Oh, 20 seconds, we'll come back to that one. These are the ones I did for four minutes to let them but rest. But they have been left. How long did you rest them for? Well, I put them in cold water to stop them cooking. Ah! ah. And that's the trick, is yes. it? Now, if you make hard-boiled eggs, Put them in cold water and run them for a couple of about five minutes. And you don't get the brown of the black. Can, when chefs make eggs on meals in posh restaurants, do they keep them <gasps> runny wow. by doing the cold water trick? Yes. Put them in oh cold wow! Water. That's how you stop it. That is perfect. So that is four minutes, and you have to have yes. marmite. Oh. When my kids were growing up, marmite and butter. We had them every day, and that is your look. Nice. That is your perfect. Oh, that looks good. Now, just to show you this one here, this one we just cooked while we're looking, just to show you. See, that one there is slightly undercooked, as you see. Ugh. But, What's but, but, Craig, you don't even that. look at that. Do you not like Craig? eggs? Oh, the white bit's going all stretchy. No, yeah. no, here's the point. Leave that for about two or three minutes and like that one there. So you Vacuum. take them out before they're cooked and the residual heat finishes them. Just the lid back on that. Phil yeah. Vickery, brains no. and brawns. No. How long well. have you been a chef, Phil? How long have you uh, been a chef? 42 years. Uh, your best moment on television, that. Yeah. Born <laughs> and egg. And yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Phil. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, Absolute perfect, pleasure. Perfect eggs. Okay. Uh, competition time.